You're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. This video is in support of the recent release of the Kremenko Z1 firmware. And here we're going to have a look at the hard disk functionality that's included with the Kremenko Z1. In fact, one of the things that really held back uh, rolling out the Kremenko firmware was the lack of hard disk support. Um, on the IMSA 8080, we got lucky and were able to really build just a super floppy. Um, there's no extra hard disk controller on that on that machine. Um, we just were able to create a floppy disk with very large geometry that gave the appearance of a 4 megabyte hard disk. But that wasn't an option on the Kremenko. Uh, with CDOS and Chromix in particular, um, they are you know, very specifically coded to work with the original hardware and there was no way to work around that. So eventually I plucked up the courage and started work on building an emulation of the WDI2, uh, the Winchester Disk Interface Adapter from Kamenko, uh, which was quite a piece of work because it contains um, three key ICs, the Zilog Z80 DMA chip, the Zilog Z80 um, CTC timer control chip, and the Zilog Z80 PIO parallel interface chip. And I had to implement quite a large proportion of the functionality of those three chips in addition to emulating the hard disk itself, which is an IMI7710, uh, approximately 10 megabyte or 11 megabyte unformatted. But after perseverance, uh, I managed to get a working hard disk emulation going and um, that's what we're about to investigate today. Now you'll notice on the desktop right now, there's no evidence of any hard disk. And if I open up the sys folder, you can see that the three hard disks that are available to us are all considered offline. No surprises there when we open up the disk library. Um, there are not any hard disk files corresponding to the default hard disk file names, which are no surprise, HD0, HD1, and HD2. But I do provide a hard disk image called empty, where um, every byte on all of the surfaces and sectors and cylinders, etc., of that disk are all zero. So, but it is the right file size. So to create a hard disk, we first of all need to um, make a copy of that image and rename it to hard disk zero or HD zero. Even before we do that though, we can investigate the support built into uh, various layers of the software for hard disks. So if I um, start the machine, I'll just get the CPA up. I'm using, uh, it's already powered on, it's in a wait state. So if I hit run and the um, ROM based RDOS is waiting for us to press carriage return a few times on the keyboard. It does its memory test. If I hit escape, um, while just as soon as it finishes the memory test, then we actually end up in the RDOS monitor. And one of the features of RDOS is an inbuilt uh, hardware test. We hit T, it reruns, it actually copies itself into RAM and switches out the ROM, uh, tests the memory again and then drops into the disk test stage. F for floppy and H for hard disk. Support for, in fact, up to four units here. Uh, we'll test unit zero. And you'll see that it goes through a number of stages. First of all, testing the data bus for the command uh, carriage to a hard disk, which are effectively the PIOs. Uh, the Z80 DMA chip is tested for memory to memory transfers which is interesting because they're not actually used when the, for the hard disk itself, um, not memory to memory DMA anyway. But then finally we see that there are no index pulses received and it, that tap part of the test times out and that's because there is no hard disk, it's offline, not available to be tested. So uh, we will in fact put the CDOS disk into drive A and proceed to boot CDOS. And 
the reason why I've done that is that's going to let us run the uh, Chromemco's hard disk test utility. And this is also going to show off another feature of the Chromemco Z1 firmware and the desktop UI. Uh, you'll notice that this is expecting a Chromemco 3102 terminal and that is the default personality for the TTYs. So we're getting the boxed graphics, the cursor addressing. Um, unless you own a Chromemco 3102, you will never have seen this application formatted the correct way on screen. So we can attempt to select a drive. We'll attempt to select unit zero, and you'll see that we get a 0700 select error. And if we consult the um, Chromix or CDOS documentation, that error basically means that the drive we've chosen cannot be selected. In other words, it's more than likely absent. And we know that's the case for us. So we'll drop out of HD test. Um, we will proceed with making a copy of this empty hard disk image. Now, and to do that, we're going to download it to our host operating system takes a little while it is a you know a little over a 10 meg file so just watch it um, be served up by the esp32 web server you can see it's downloading in the corner of my browser now and there it's done and while you can't see me doing this all i'm doing on my host operating system um, is renaming that file from empty hdd to hd0 .hdd. and now I will drag that back into my disk library you can see it there and it's going to upload it and here we see another feature of the new desktop user interface that when we're doing long running transactions the screen shades and we see the spinner so that we know something's actually happening and it's now currently uploading that same 10 megabyte file under a new name into the disk library so bear with it, it won't take too long, and now it's done. Okay, so at this point, we can just press external clear on the front panel. That should get it to um, reevaluate what disks are connected. Maybe not, I think I might actually have to power cycle it, so I'm using the front panel power button to turn the power off. And on again and we'll hit reload you'll notice we now have an HD0 uh, device icon on the desktop pointing to the HD0 HDD file if I open the sys window we can see in fact yes our first hard disk is online or at least matched to a file but you'll notice in square brackets there's nothing appearing and that's because every byte on that hard disk image is zero and so it cannot find the fingerprint of a hard disk and we'll resolve that problem shortly so if we boot up again into CDOS I'll put the machine in a run state we'll boot into CDOS or in fact I can even go back a step excuse me I'll uh, hit external clear we'll boot again but this time I'll hit escape and get into the RDOS prompt we can run those test, that test again. And this time when we test the hard disk, unit zero, we will also see that it passes the uh, index pulse test. It's received index pulses from the disk. It has tested um, the correct rotational speed of the disk and verified that there are 20 sectors per cylinder. Normally on a Chromemco machine, um, in fact, hard disks with this WDI2 controller can only um, be read or worked with if the CPU is running at 4 megahertz. Thanks to the um, wonders and tricks of modern emulation, I can actually um, fool the software into believing that um, it's always running at 4 megahertz in irrespective of what speed you've set it to so you can actually use hard disks at any cpu speed all right enough babbling let's get back to booting cdos and once we're in cdos um, if we try changing now this version of cdos you'll notice by the disk name if i bring the disk library up again this is a version of cdos that has been uh, 
generated. If we look at the CDOS directory, we've got all the files for generating uh, the CDOS gen program here to generate different versions of CDOS. This one's been generated with hard disk support built in. Uh, that's a bit beyond the scope of this video. I might do a follow-up video showing you how to do that. But if I try changing to drive E now, which would be the hard disk, and go to get a directory, you'll see we get a strange response, and that's because this disk is all zeros and things aren't quite right. So in fact, what we need to do is initialize this disk as a CDOS disk. So we use the uh, program, if I get the directory up again on drive A. If we use the init 271 program uh, and we initialize drive E, you'll see it's doing similar tests to what we had from the RDOS, but now that those tests have succeeded, we can in fact format a CDOS or a Chromix disk. So we'll go with CDOS. The geometry for the disk is um, hard-coded into all of the Chromemco uh, applications that deal with disks connected to the WDI2 controller. And now it's going to sit here and make its way through the uh, 161 hex or uh, around about 350 uh, odd cylinders. Uh, I might fast forward this part of the video just to get us to the end a little more quickly. So I've fast forwarded through the process to save us a little bit of time. Um, one thing of note uh, that's quite pleasing is that the WDI hard disk controller um, implements a correct DMA handshaking interface with the CPU. So the hold light on the front panel has been pleasingly busy while that process was taking place. And it is whenever the hard disk is accessed. Because the content of the disk was all zeros, um, it's found kind of rubbish effectively for the in the alternate tracks sector. So we're getting these illegal entries, but we can clear those just by saying no, we don't want to declare any alter alternate tracks. We shouldn't expect any sector errors uh, in this emulation. And now we're going to label it with the default hard disk label. You can date the disk, but it's not Y2K compliant and it doesn't really serve a purpose. So we won't worry about that. The limitation under CDOS isn't so much the disk size, but that the directory space is limited to 512 entries maximum. So if you created 512 1K files, you'd go nowhere near filling up your 10 megabyte hard disk. But that's it. Under CDOS, you do not need to now further format the disk. We can simply change to drive E, get a directory, we're not presented with junk. It now understands that the disk is empty. We can do a stat and actually find out the total size of the hard disk, although we did see it at the end of the directory there, um, and see that 16K has been set aside for use by the 512 directory entries. And that's it. We can start copying files to the hard disk using the hard disk. The one thing you can't do under CDOS is you cannot uh, boot CDOS from a hard disk. Um, so there's no point copying um, the CDOS um, you know, files, system files onto the hard disk. Booting CDOS from a hard disk is not an option, but it is under Chromix. Now, the last thing I'll show you is uh, for CDOS is that if we refresh, uh, in fact, we'll have to quickly refresh the browser, um, bring up the system window again. Whoop, no, in fact, we'll have to, sorry about that. Um, we'll actually have to reboot the machine. And when we do that, and reload the desktop, and open the system window, you'll now see we have the correct fingerprint for uh, a CDOS hard disk. The H indicates that it's formatted for CDOS, the 8 indicates that it's an 8 inch hard disk, and the 1 means that it's using the hard disk parameter table entry one, which is for the uh, 10 megabyte hard disk. And we can go through the same process to create hard disks one and two, and therefore we could have a total of 30 megabytes of hard disk storage available to us under CDOS.
Right, well, let's move on to Chromix. Um, we're going to eject the CDOS boot disk. We'll get the Chromix boot disk out of our disk library. And put the machine in a run state and boot into Chromix. Now Chromix is, um, this is the boot, the Chromix bootloader and it's capable of booting from hard disks. You can configure Chromix to do this automatically, but currently we've got it set up to make you make the choices. We don't have a hard disk formatted for Chromix yet, so we better choose floppy. And it's the floppy disk, eight inch floppy disk in drive A. I don't care about the date at the moment, so we'll fast track past that. Logging into Chromix, and if we try to, uh, if we have a look at our uh, Chromix directory, you can see we don't yet have a mount point for a hard disk. Oh, sorry, we do. I must have done that earlier. I've got a mount point there called HD. You'll notice that it's not a directory. Um, Chromix is differs from regular Unix in that you don't mount block devices on directories, you mount block devices on files. So if we now try to mount uh, HD0, which is formatted for CDOS, admittedly, onto that file called HD, you'll see we get uh, a message saying, that, well, it's not a Chromex disk, you can't do that. So you know, remember that we, this thing was fingerprinted as HB1, meaning that it's strictly a CDOS disk. So if we want to use it for Chromix, we've really got to begin again. So there are two initialization programs under Chromix. Uh, one uh, is well suited to formatting floppy disks, just called init. But the other one, which is suitable for formatting hard disks under the WDI controller, is init 11.27. So if we run that, You'll see um, that it asks for a device name. That's going to simply be HD0. And it's going to go through those same sort of controller tests that we saw even from RDOS. But this time, you'll see the default disk type that it wants to format for is X for Chromix. We'll proceed with that. Again, it's got the geometry tables hard coded in this application. And it's going to go through that same process of reformatting the hard disk but this time for Chromix. Again, I'll fast forward through to this and I'll see you at the other end. And welcome back. Now this time when it completes formatting all the sectors, uh, we are not going to be uh, given a list of illegal alternate tracks because that's already been cleaned up by the, t the fact that we already formatted this under CDOS. So it hasn't found any unusual um, alternate track definitions. Still not going to define any. There it is, already initialized. But can we mount it? Well, if we try to mount HD0 on that um, file in the root directory, we're still going to be told that it's not a Chromix disk. So even though it's initialized for Chromix, and if I refresh this view, no, we still have to maybe refresh the desktop or even reboot the computer. Let's just check it out. Right, so I'm just going to have to quickly shut down Chromix to show you what I'm talking about. Shutting down Chromix and reinitializing the computer, uh, in fact, powering it off using the front panel power switch and on again. And when we look at the hard disk fingerprint, you'll notice that it's now changed from an H to a C, meaning that this is now a Chromix uh, formatted hard disk. So we'll boot Chromix again, put the machine in run state, booting from the Chromix floppy disk because we still don't have anything on the hard disk. Uh, 
And if we try to mount that hard disk to our hard disk mount point, you'll see that it still says it's not a Chromex disk, even though the fingerprint is telling us it's ready for Chromex. And that's because there's no Chromex file system on the disk. So unlike CDOS, which was ready to go at this point and was able to use the disk, under Chromex, we have to make a file system on that hard disk. So this process takes a few minutes uh, while it, because the Chromex file system is a Unix-like file system uh, using inodes and the like. And so it has to go and set up quite a lot of data structures across a number of sectors across the disk to create the file system. But once the file system is created, we should be able to mount it and then check the available free space. Now that process does take a good few minutes. Um, I've fast forwarded it to save you the boredom of watching it proceed. But now we can go ahead and mount HD0 on our hard disk mount point. That succeeded without much fanfare. And now if we run a free, we can see that's the floppy disk that we're booting from, where the root file system is. And now we have our hard disk with approximately 10 megabytes of available free space. Um, because the only thing on there really is the sort of super map, inode map, etc., and no actual files. So if we change directory to the hard disk and have a look, there's nothing there. It's empty. But that's all right. Now in that um, state, we can just have a hard disk if it's just for data mounted this way. We could have mounted it absolutely anywhere in the file system, in the root file system. So this could become a new home directory for users or a new uh, temporary directory, whatever you need it for. But if we want to use the hard disk as an alternative boot device, we need to get the whole operating system copied over onto it. And to make that easier, rather than following a long list of instructions, um, Krememco provided a command file. It's in the uh, command directory. So if we switch over there and have a look, you can see a command file called new disk. And if we have a look at the contents of that, does a lot of parameter checking, but ultimately it um, does an init using the wrong version of init. So we're going to um, abort that step. It's going to try to make the file system again. We're going to abort that step. Um, but then it's going to do a W boot, which actually copies a bootloader onto the boot sectors and then starts to um, and then mounts the disk and starts to copy all of the files from the um, root file system onto the hard disk, preparing it as a system disk. So the first thing we need to make sure we do is unmount the disk, otherwise this process will fail. Sorry, we unmount the actual device, not the place where it's mounted. And now we can say new disk, HD0. Again, it's going to invoke the wrong version of init, but that's okay. You can see that it's the wrong version because it's using drive letters. We're going to abort that with the control C. Then it's going to want to do the make FS, but we won't continue with that because we've already done that step. And now it's going to take, again, a good few minutes to um, copy the root file system over onto the hard disk. So again, I'll probably just fast forward through this in the video and get us to the end. And that process took another good few minutes, but at least when you're doing it, uh, you'll be entertained by the blinking lights on your front panel, especially the hard work of the hold light, given the amount of DMA activity taking place there. But now that that's created, I could mount this and investigate what's on the hard disk, but let's cut to the chase.
we're going to shut down Chromix. Chromix does have a facility for booting via floppy to a hard disk, but RDOS uh, 308 also supports booting directly to hard disk. So we're going to eject our Chromix floppy disk. You can see we've got no floppy disks mounted. I hit external clear. We're back into RDOS. And now it is actually um, finding that its default device has no bootloader. So it's dropped us directly into the RDOS prompt. And that's because of the absence of the floppy disk. So we can boot directly off hard disk zero. Now we are getting this prompt for, by the bootloader, but the bootloader came from hard disk, so we can choose hard disk and HD0. You can configure the Chromex kernel to bypass that step and go directly to hard disk, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. And now we're into Chromex, and we can prove that we booted off the hard disk by checking the root device, and it is indeed the HD0 device. Uh, run a free, just see what's going on, and we should see that our hard disk, some of the space on our hard disk has been used up because we now have a full Chromix installation on this disk. With all the usual directories copied off our previous boot floppy. Now, there is one other thing that's worth noting. Uh, if we shut down Chromix again, On the WDI hard disk controller, um, actually no, on the floppy disk controller, there are a series of dip switches in an original Kremenko machine, and those have been remapped onto the front panel. So if I raise um, switch at bit position 13 and do an external clear so that we're back into running the RDOS boot process, this time you'll notice that it goes straight to the hard disk for the bootloader. So um, by raising that switch, we've told it that the hard disk is the preferred boot device. If we had configured Chromix um, to bypass this step, we could be already on our way straight into the operating system. Now, the final thing I'm gonna do, and I'll uh, break a little rule here, I'm not gonna bother logging in and shutting down Chromix. I'm just gonna do a clear uh, we're going to put our um, CDOS floppy disk back into drive A briefly and boot into CDOS because I want to run that hard disk test utility again that we ran earlier in the video. Whoop, missed that. Um, Oops, I must have got the, oh, I've still got switch 13 up, so it's finding the bootloader of Chromix bootloader and then saying there's no Chromix system to load. We'll go again, purely from floppy, and we're into CDOS. So if we run HD test, this time we should be able to select drive zero. I don't want to do anything destructive, but we could do a, a random seek test. And you can see that HD0 is going crazy, walking across all of the cylinders and heads and surfaces and testing the hard disk. Um, so I'm pretty confident that the emulation is um, pretty good now. Um, it's reporting the right sort of errors at the right times and all the behaviors seem correct for the hard disk. So they've uh, stood the test of time for a while and HD test is only proving that that continues to be the case. So we'll um, quit HD test. And um, the final thing we'll do is you'll notice that the hard disk is currently mounted, or sorry, uh, online. The file is being used by the machine, so it's grayed out in the library. If I power off the machine and do a refresh, uh, 
oh sorry, powering off the machine is going to make me reload the desktop. This time when I open the library, you'll notice there's no hard disk icon on the desktop. The hard disk icon in the library is now solid. And if we look in under Sys, all the hard disks are offline. So if you ever need to delete a hard disk file, uh, you need to be in this powered off state. And we can just simply go and drag the hard disk image over the trash can and delete it. So we're back to a machine with no online hard disks. If we power on, there wouldn't be a disk to work with and we'd have to start again from our empty disk image.